Hey everybody, Ben here from the Bono Podcast and welcome to Top 5 Friday. So every Friday we get together and we chat about the Top 5 something, probably from Blood Bowl. So far we haven't run out of things to talk about yet. Talking of Blood Bowl, this week we're going to do something slightly different. We are going to look at the Top 5 Blood Bowl variants. So different ways to play the game that you love. There are a ton, there are quite a few official variants, say official, uh, official by the NAF that are kind of compiled and pretty well play tested rule sets. No spoilers, but those are basically going to appear here. So without further ado, let's have a look at the top five Blood Bowl variants. Number five, it's Death Bowl. So I kind of wanted to make this the number four just because it is a four player variant, but because it is a four player variant, it takes basically one hour per player. So, Death Bowl. If you haven't heard of Death Bowl, look at this. Let's zoom in on the pitch a little bit. So, this rule set will be linked in the show notes below. And go on over to the NAF site and have a look. Now, the rules are for the Blood Bowl 2016 edition. None of these have been updated yet. Uh, but I think it's basically just playable as it is. Look at this. It is a four-player Blood Bowl game. So you're going to need a special pitch, you're going to need a special group of players, and you're going to need a load of time. This is akin to playing Mega Battles when you were younger. Like if you had a day, an afternoon, a full evening, this game is going to take four hours, but it is going to be an insane amount of fun. Like I said, you need four players. There is no kind of stoppage for this game. So let's have a quick talk through what the crack is with Death Bowl. So, first things first, you do need four players. They are standard 11s teams. Uh, generally speaking, you can run a league of Death Bowl, but it's probably better to just play a one-off game. Whether that's, I'm going to take my league, my, everybody take your league teams. Um, and you get uh, basically inducements for the lower team. So if one team's at 1,200 and the others are at 1,100 and, you know, baby, basically a million, you get TV uh, difference for your petty cash. That's probably the best way to do it. Or you just go, guys, we are going to have an 1,100 death ball match. You can skill buy. And then your teams are ready to go. So we'll ignore the rankings and scoring bit. Basically, you get this pitch here. Your teams are here, 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 and here. So my hand's gone missing there. So basically, there are these massive L-shaped um, wide zones, basically, and you cannot deploy in those. You have to deploy three guys on the line of scrimmage, which is the hazard tape, just here. And uh, that's basically it. Everybody else sits here. At the beginning of each half, and it is an eight-turn half, two balls will appear in these squares, marked one, two, three, and four. The first is deployed with a D4, D8 halved basically and the second will be a D3 among the remaining spaces so there are two balls in play at all times and you just play on if someone scores a touchdown the ball basically their end their, their turn ends and a ball immediately drops in one of those top four squares and if you are there camping the spawn point first of all shame on you secondly you do get a chance to catch it um, but don't be a camper the other cool thing about this is because it is a four player variant, you get to do more stuff. So you can blitz against every team every turn. You can't blitz three times against one guy, but you can blitz Ian, you can blitz Craig, and you can blitz Lewis. You can blitz one of their players each turn. So that's quite fun. If your wild animal fails, uh, you lose your blitz against one player, that's absolutely fine. You can't then blitz with somebody else against that play that sorry that team, um, but you can still blitz merrily to everybody else. Turnovers are turnovers. The other cool rule is because there are two balls, you essentially get two pass actions a turn. You cannot throw a player twice and you cannot throw the same ball twice, nor can you hand over the same ball twice, but it does mean that you can throw one ball that way and you can throw a goblin that way. Or you can just throw two separate goblins. However, no goblin can be thrown more than once a turn because of health and safety reasons. Seems risky. Um, so, assists, there are some rules on actually who can and who can't. Personally, I think the easiest way to play this game is just everybody uh, does... <laughs> everybody assists all the time basically you are always punching above and any tackle zone on a ball is a negative tackle zone 
you can vary that within your group and you can have alliances you can say right Craig if you don't stop me picking up this ball now I'll help you later um, but it's Blood Bowl guys no one wants that to happen you get this they've done a really, really good job with this rule set there's some rules here for interceptions who gets to intercept basically every team gets to intercept and the closest person gets to try first so if you're going to throw across three teams they all are going to get a chance to intercept that ball that is quite cool in this rule set, there is a Death Bowl 7s variant as well, but quite frankly, if you are playing this game here, with this pitch, with four players, this is a spectacle of a game. It's going to take a while, but it is going to be insane fun. And because the game doesn't stop, it doesn't reset except at halftime, it's just carnage the entire time. So I cannot wait for the world to reopen so we can build a big old death bowl pitch and just have a massive multiplayer game. Number four is Street Bowl. So Street Bowl, if you've been following the channel for a little while, uh, Ben and I did a little Street Bowl episode last year sometime where we played a game on Roll20. And we just did an episode talking about Street Bowl and how it works and why it is so cool. So first thing you need to know about Street Bowl is it plays on a different pitch. There we go. Let's get that up on the screen there. It's the same length as a standard Blood Bowl pitch. Essentially, you don't include the wide zones. The whole idea is that this game is a, is a friendly, is an unlicensed game played in the back alleys of an Imperial City. So cool aspects here are the floor is lava. Not quite, but the floor is cobblestones, which basically means plus one to armor. There are also walls along each side of the street. Not the ends, the ends are still crowd, but each side of the street is a wall, and a wall is plus one armor as well. So if you stack it into the ground, into a wall, you are going to have a very bad time. The other angle with this is that it is essentially a version of sevens. You get a limited pool of resources so teams are purchased with 600,000 you can have up to 11 players you've got to have at least seven there's seven on the pitch at any one time maximum um, unless you're swarming obviously and uh, you can only have naught to four positional players or specialists that are not linemen it's a quick play variant and it is very very bloody you can see here cobblestones versus armor add plus one to the armor roll for any player that is knocked over while playing street bowl whether by blocking or falling over. Um, cobblestones versus balls. This was the other really interesting thing when we played this. It scatters an additional time. I don't know if you guys have ever played any kind of game on cobblestones or on a street. Things bounce in a crazy way, especially if you're using an American football shaped object. So it bounces twice, essentially. So you're getting plus one armor against the ground. The ball is bouncing twice. And there is also walls versus armor. And this is it. If a player is being pushed back against a wall and knocked over, then the blocking player gets plus two to the armor roll. Plus one for the wall and plus one for cobblestones. Basically, what you want to be doing is mighty blowing people into the wall and into the ground for a sweet plus three to armor. That's fantastic. And you've only got seven, really, seven to 11 players anyway. So removal is going to be key in this game. The really sweet thing about Street Bowl, and one of the reasons I love it quite so much, is it's really thematic. Like It's set in a non-professional Blood Bowl setting, so there's no ref. Secret weapons get dealt with ever so slightly, basically ever so slightly differently. Um, essentially, they get a rock thrown at them rather than being sent off because there is no ref. But also, you get magic potions. I don't know why, it's just cool. Some of them are tap water, some of them are fungus beer. Basically, they do various effects, and I believe you get one potion at the beginning and you can buy another one for 50k a piece. It's just cool. The whole idea of the potion is sometimes they get back into the game. So if someone's knocked out or casualtyed or whatever, you can you can give them a potion, and sometimes it's going to be great. Uh, sometimes it's not going to be great. So if you roll a one, they're poisoned and they're killed immediately. Fair enough. There's a slightly different weather table at Smog and Things because it's set in a city, which is cool. And there is a slightly different kickoff table. Again, it's just really thematic. So I love this variant because it is quick to play and it is really thematic. And if you're a kind of Mordheim kind of guy, which is uh, you like the setting of Imperial Cities, this is just a modeling opportunity waiting to happen. Number three, we've got Dungeon Bowl. So Dungeon Bowl is basically 
the game everyone wants to play because it is Blood Bowl in a dungeon, but it's just crazier than that. So Dungeon Bowl was a, essentially an expansion box set that came out in second edition. It was Elves and Dwarves Dungeon Bowl. They came with bright orange dwarf plastic miniatures and bright yellow elf plastic miniatures to go along with the second edition set. Seriously, second edition was amazing. You had the polystyrene pitch and then you had the dungeon. Solid job games workshop. So Dungeon Bowl is a game of Blood Bowl that is set in a dungeon. So there are a couple of angles to this and I suppose the biggest one is that you will need some kind of dungeon. And there's a couple of ways to do this. If you're a and d player, if you've got Warhammer Quest or something with dungeon tiles, you can just use those. Basically you work with your opponent to build a dungeon cooperatively and then roll off. You will need an end zone piece. Um, basically 3x2 or 4x2 that is the end zone that is where your team starts and that's where your opponent needs to score so it is basically a room that is the touchdown zone that's fine you guys can grok that a way to cheat dungeon bowl onto your blood bowl however is if you just use a standard blood bowl pitch and um i don't know get a bunch of walls get some polystyrene tape whatever you can just tape off some squares of your blood bowl pitch and it really does adjust the flow of the play um we way back at the beginning of the podcast we did some tests with using terrain on a blood bowl pitch and basically what it does is it controls your running lanes and it just allows that game to be different have different zones that's a it's a good little way to cheat dungeon bowl onto your standard pitch without building a dungeon that is the other option though build a dungeon it's sweet fun, it's completely unnecessary, and you'll love making it so much. A couple of aspects to Dungeon Bowl that are really interesting. Generally speaking, there's a couple of different ways to play. The classic way is the first one to score a touchdown wins. The other way is you have a time limit. So no X turns, you just have a time limit. So if you're playing in a tournament, for example, you've got two hours. and the end of that, whoever scores the most touchdown wins. My favorite way to play Dungeon Bowl is with three balls essentially so you're going to end up with a nil nil draw all the way up to a three a three nil ransacking okay you leave it open format how do you get the balls so the other beautiful twist of dungeon ball is that there are six treasure chests and in those treasure chests can be a ball so in the old school format you had little tokens and on the back was an explosion or a ball basically you open a treasure chest it will either be the ball and then you get a chance to pick up the ball or it would explode in your face and pow you to the ground pretty cool way to do it like i said i like the three ball variant so there's a 50 percent chance that that chest is going to have a ball the other cool thing about db is you end up with teleporters so teleport pads as well normally there's six of them you jump on a teleporter you roll the dice and you come out on that teleporter they're numbered so you get in teleporter number one you roll the dice teleporter six you bamf over to there there is a special rule sometimes that if you roll your own teleporter you will be sent into the casualty zone that it's just crazy there's so much design space in dungeon ball and i think that's why i love it so much not only that but there are walls just like in street ball you can bounce the balls off it you can chuck players into them it's just a really cool experience to play through a dungeon versus your opponent you've got teleporters you've got treasure chests you can have wandering monsters there were rules back in the day for this where you could have random random wandering monsters appear in your dungeon bowl um dungeon which i thought was quite sweet i am personally a fan of having three of those treasure chests be balls and you just play on you have a 16 turn limit and you just play to 16 turns you've got those balls out there to be discovered fantastic you can just go you can try and score you got three areas kind of essentially it, it turns into kind of like a a zone battle where you're like right i'm going to completely sack off the right hand side i'm just going to focus on the left in the center put all my power in there and go for a 2-1 win that's quite cool i also do like the fact that uh, you can make the other three treasure chests mimics that's pretty cool too so there's a 50 percent chance of it being a ball and you going for the cheeky score and there's a 50 percent chance of it basically being a squig which i think is pure carnage so dungeon bowl is just iconic when it comes to this they produced a pc game of it and it wasn't very good i cannot wait for games workshop to redo this now we are going to be looking at dungeon bowl this year we've got some cool ideas 
we think it should be played more and we want to make it more accessible to players because it is a great way to play. And the reason that I really love it is not in the NAF rules, but in the old 1996 rules, you had mixed teams. You had different colleges that mixed players up and that was amazing. You could take the beast wizards and these are, these are the teams you can combine. It was just cool, it was just thematic and it allowed you to play a different way. So Dungeon Bowl, I just I could talk about it for days and days and days and days and we should probably do a, a thingy about it, like a proper podcast about it and things like that because there is just so much you can do with Dungeon Bowl. There are even Dungeon Bowl example treasure, uh, treasure maps. No, just Dungeon Maps. Anyway, my number three is Dungeon Bowl. My number two Blood Bowl variant is... Blood Bowl. So I figured I had to put the actual edition here because Straight Eleven's Blood Bowl is just a phenomenal game. Like we talk about all the crazy ways to play. You know, we do mixed teams, we do this, we do that, we look at this, we want more wizards, we want giants. And the reason we want more and the reason we can hunt for other ways to play, for other things to do, is because the core game is so amazing. I am preaching to the choir here. I know that you're watching videos about Blood Bowl, which means I think you may love Blood Bowl. But it spawned video game after video game, edition after edition, miniature after miniature, tournament after tournament. You've got tournaments for this bad boy. You've got leagues for this. There is there a feel, there is a feel to standard Blood Bowl. Whether it's you brewing a guy up in a league to be a pro star player and he's yours and you're building your franchise. Whether you are a competitive player that is actually trying to make the best of your team and tailor it to the meta that you think is going to be that tournament. You've got the competitive aspect. You've got the narrative aspect of brewing your guys up. And because it's a very standard kind of format where there's only 29 teams and 24 star players, there's an incredible modeling aspect to Blood Bowl as well. And when you are playing in the standardized format where everybody can get access to everything, it allows you to be creative. It allows you to come up with cool alternate miniatures. That give you, I'm going to use this as my troll for my team because I think it's going to be sweet. I'm going to use this for my Rat Ogre because I think it will be sweet. And you know what? Because the kind of baseline is so clear and so well-rounded, you can just be creative as you like in Blood Bowl, and hey, that's what we do here. We look at the game as it is, and we also look at the game as it could be. And if it wasn't so solid, if it wasn't so fantastically balanced, wink, you wouldn't be able to do that. So, Blood Bowl, straight Blood Bowl 11s, is an awesome way to play. But I don't think it's the best way. So you will probably not be surprised by this. I am a sevens nut. I love Blood Bowl sevens. We've done literal series on it on YouTube. We've done podcasts about it. We've produced our own Blood Bowl sevens pitches that I need to... I'll explain why I haven't got those in stock just yet. So Blood Bowl sevens is my number one way to play Blood Bowl. Where do I start? Let's give a quick breakdown of sevens, I guess. So very similar to Street Bowl, you get a 600k team, up to 11 players, minimum of seven, and 0 to 4 of those can be positionals. That's kind of like the crux. There are different variants of sevens, there are different ways to go with it, but that is kind of where it is. And you also have a smaller pitch. And I think this is some of my favorite parts of it is this reduced size pitch so the pitch is i think 11 by 20 all in all six yeah 11 by 20 it says it on the screen ben my bad guys but the thing i love about it so much is where there is that no man's land in the middle so in blood bowl in street bowl and kind of in death bowl you deploy on the line of scrimmage and the first turn is always about being punched in the face that's just how it goes. If you're an agile team, you're kind of just holding on for that first turn. If you're a strength team, you're just holding on to make sure that you dominate. Sevens, there is no line of scrimmage. That's not fair. There's two lines of scrimmage. So you've got these this middle ground in the middle where no players can be deployed. You put your three guys on the line of scrimmage each side, and then the ball can be kicked anywhere before your line of scrimmage. So if I'm kicking to you, it cannot be in my period my part of this pitch but it can be on this uh, the middle or in your line of scrimmage area that means the first turn of this reduced 
turn game, there's only six turns per half, is almost all positioning. But what it also is, is it means you may be able to get one good blitz in. So you get to go first, you get to move first, you might be able to get blitz on one of my players, but then on my turn, my se going second means that I immediately get to react to what you're doing. If you've come closer to me, I get good blocks, I get good blitzes. It balances it out because you receive the ball, but I kind of get the first attack. And I feel like that is an incredibly brilliant balancing element to this game. It is not all just line up and die. Not saying that's what it is, but it can be. This is manoeuvre. You can wait for them to come to you, or you can hunt them down. So yeah, six turns per half, seven players per team, and you just get to experience Blood Bowl. And sevens gives you that element of time saved. So we run a league, we've run a league for years, and you play one game of Blood Bowl a night. It normally takes you about two hours to play a game, and it gives you half an hour to socialize and things like that. We have had many sevens nights where you get three games in, in basically the same amount of time. You rock up at seven, you're done by half ten. You've played three games. We've had tournaments in an evening with three rounds. And it is an awesome way to play. And it's great for teaching new players Blood Bowl because you get to just go through so much stuff. Normally in sevens, there's restrictions on skills and things like that. And I don't mean like this skill is not allowed. In some conditions, maybe. But actually what it does is it, you have less skills across the pitch. You've got less players. It's easy to kind of grok what's going on. And it's so much quicker. If you go and you are brewed up to play Blood Bowl, you can get this game done in 35, 40, 45 minutes. Happily. You means you can also include some fun rules. So we've done a mixed teams... Mixed Team 7's event twice, maybe three times, and we've got those games in well under an hour apiece. So if you are kind of like used to quick board games, if you are used to playing Magic the Gathering, where you've got a round and you can comfortably play it within an hour and then you just rack up and play another one, this is the best way to play. We've all played those Blood Bowl games where it's turn 6 and your team's dead and this game is just over. That's okay in 7's, because in 15 minutes you're going to go play another game and you get that repetition. So if you want to experience how to run a team, if you're like, oh, I don't know what team to play in the league, let's have a sevens night. You can try three different teams out in an evening. You can get to grips with your team in an evening by playing three games. But I just cannot say enough great stuff about sevens. We're going to go into detail soon into the great way to play sevens in Blood Bowl 2020 and how it's changed up and what the teams look like. But I'm just going to continue gushing about sevens because it is faster and it is just funner, to be honest with you. More fun. And that's great. Anyway, guys, that is my top five Blood Bowl variants. So do let me know in the comments what you think below. I imagine none of you will be surprised that sevens is, in my opinion, the best way to play Blood Bowl. But hey, you get more games, more teams and just more fun. And you just come on, that's just winning. Thanks very much for watching. We'll be back soon with more Blood Bowl content. Happy blocking. Thanks very much for watching. We really appreciate your support. If you want to support the show even further, please like and subscribe. It really helps us out. Or come and join us in our Patreon uh, link below where you get early access to our content and monthly competitions. See you later.